and a quite more complex analysis is material balance analysis. It's our eighth analysis. Okay, so this is a model for our material balance. It's a tank model. So into our tank, we input water injection or maybe gas injection. Into our tank, aquifer production comes, right? This aquifer. And from our tank, we produce oil, we produce water, and we produce gas. And we can also inject gas leaf, gas leaf gas. Okay. So this is our tank, but actually it's just a calculation tank. Okay. It's it's not a real tank. It's a calculation tank. Inside our tank, inside our calculating tank, is actually this algebraic equation. Okay? Yeah. The name itself already gives us indication. It's a balance, material balance, produced, injected. Okay? Input and output. Okay? So how much I produced, how much I injected. Okay, this kind of issue is actually the core of material balance. But I will not discuss in more detail what is each uh, parameter like this one. But actually, the core of material balance is just do the balance, production and injection. Okay, you can get this equation after doing step-by-step -step analysis to know how much oil initially in place in our reservoir and how much the water influx, how much the production. And if you rearrange algebraically the upper equation, you can get the lower equation, which give you this one, a very, very important parameter and or initial oil in place or original oil in place. So, you can get this information from geological analysis, from volumetric analysis, and you can also get this one from material balance analysis. You can get this one if you have comprehensive data of your production. So if you have cumulative oil production and cumulative water production, and also, but you need to do quite a challenging analysis to get this one, water influx, and if you know the PVT data, like formation volume factor, produce GOR, solution GOR, gas formation volume factor, and so on and so forth, you incorporate all of those data, all of those parameters in this calculation, and you get your oil in place initially. Okay, But this is one thing for our material balance analysis. What is more important maybe using the material balance we can do this software based analysis okay so this is uh, the analysis that is done using mbal software mbal ptex so i construct two reservoirs connected here and oil well we have this one using gas leaf this one water injection and this one a gas well Okay, basically the operation is the same, material balance. Okay, you construct the model, you in incorporate all your data, and you do the history matching. You get the reservoir pressure point, the actual point from your measurement, and the model, the software, will do the matching to get this blue curve. Okay, so it means that your model mimics the actual data represented by this point. So if you are match, if you are historically match, from that you can use your model to do the prediction, to do the forecasting, okay? So it is not as simple as decline curve analysis. This, this forecast is, we can say that it is more reliable than a simplistic decline curve analysis, okay? So this prediction, this prediction, we can get as our production prediction. But of course, as a best practice, you need to compare and you need to combine the decline curve analysis results with material balance analysis results. 
So you have two results. If they are matched, it means that you have done a very, very good analysis combining DCA with material balance. But if they, are, if they differ significantly, it means you need to modify maybe one of analysis or maybe both analysis. Okay, either you change your decline curve analysis or maybe you need to modify your material balance analysis so they can give you a similar results. That's the best practice.